Chris Patola, they have pulled out all the stops tonight. Chris Beard is back. Bounce pass down low. Bryson Williams, who's been absolutely spectacular, has the game's first points. It's going to be interesting to see how Texas handles at least these first four or five minutes, Chris. Well, you can already see Texas Tech with Timmy Allen catches the ball. They are coming all the way over. Three, mm. Courtney Ramey with a response to get the Longhorns on the board a minute in. And he has shot the ball well of late. They're going to need to make some perimeter shots tonight, Texas. Texas Tech so good at defending their paint. They are the best in the country at doing that. You loosen that up by knocking down some perimeter shots. Warren. Baby Al Warren, the transfer from Hampton University. And not only, Mark, are they good at defending their paint, they are good at attacking the paint on the other end. Carr finds a streaking Mitchell who reverses and scores. Nice move there from Trey Mitchell. If we can hear ourselves talk for at least a moment, McCullough driving to the bucket is fouled. Tell you what, you and I have been to Lubbock, Texas, in United Supermarkets Arena a bunch of times. Tonight has to be at the top of the list for anticipation for games. Yeah, it would be hard to beat. You would be, you'd have to convince me hard, and, and Mark Adams was talking about that today. Both coaches really, just about managing emotions early in this game. Don't do anything out of character. Take a deep breath. I think for both teams, not turning the basketball over becomes so big. You know, because the adrenaline, I mean, you know how it is. Like, the adrenaline in these types of environments, it really pumps early on. Both teams have been playing pretty well. Texas Tech comes in, having won three of their last four. Texas has won their last three. Coming off that one-point win Saturday against Tennessee when they're welcome Rick Barnes back. And the free throws by McCuller. One-point lead for Tech. to the baseline, sealed off there. Skip pass, Mitchell going to drive the baseline, pass a little low, Bishop trying to get it back out towards Carr, and a foul on Tech. A grab on McCullough. you got to catch it strong tonight. Ball security is so important. Texas Tech, their defense has great hands. So every pass will be challenged, every catch will be challenged. Ball security, fighting through resistance, so key when you're playing against both of these defenses. Three from the corner from Carr is off the back rib, tipped out by Bishop, and he saves the possession for Texas. Ramey. Finds Carr, gets in the lane, scoops down low. Well, fighting Bishop, loose ball, grabbed by McCuller. He wants to take it to the rim. It rolls off, tip, that goes. You cannot be soft around the rim. Texas on the other end, soft. You gotta go up with your Christian Bishop in this game. You gotta go up expecting contact and playing through that. Santos Silva, who had that tip in at the other end, picks up the first foul for him tonight. Because if you don't, this is where Texas Tech gets you. And nobody rotating back. Courtney Ramey late to rotate back. Marcus Carr, you know, just not making a stand there. And Kevin McCuller playing through it. And then that's what Texas Tech does so well. You know, they get multiple guys following up those plays on that offensive glass. Chris Beard going early to Brock Cunningham. And Dylan DeSue going to his bench early. DeSue shoots a three a little bit long. Arms says, if you're going to leave me open, I'm going to shoot it. But he's off the mark with it. And it goes out of bounds to Texas. Three-point lead for the Red Raiders. A 
Well, Jason, Robbie, and Myron, we welcome those of you that have been watching Michigan State, Maryland. We welcome you to Lubbock, Texas, where former Tech coach Chris Beard has returned for the first time as Texas head coach. A frantic start to begin the game. Courtney Ramey, who hit a three earlier, that one in and out. It's tipped around, and out with it comes Davion Warren of Texas Tech. It is a sellout capacity crowd. Toughest Tech ticket ever to get in Lubbock. This crowd is amped up. Super Tuesday present, uh, presented by Progressive continues the Big 12. Texas, Texas Tech in Lubbock. Mark Neely, Chris Batola, take it away. Jason, Robbie, and Myron, we welcome those of you that have been watching Michigan State, Maryland. We welcome you to Lubbock, Texas, where former Tech coach Chris Beard has returned for the first time as Texas head coach. A frantic start to begin the game. Courtney Ramey, who hit a three earlier, that one in and out. It's tipped around, and out with it comes Davion Warren of Texas Tech. It is a sellout capacity crowd. Toughest Tech ticket ever to get in Lubbock. This crowd is amped up tonight. Santos Silva kicks it out. That's an open look for Wilson. from the free throw line. Texas off to a two for six shooting start. Texas Tech three for their first six. Arms finds O'Banner. They call the blocking foul on Texas. Early three-point lead for the Red Raiders in Lubbock. The important game. I mean, this is for third place in the Big 12. Both of these teams right now have identical records. This game says a lot, of, you know, moving forward for both of these teams in this Big 12 race. Chris Beard's Longhorns have missed their last five shots from the field. Haven't scored in nearly three minutes. And as we come back from the break, O'Banner shooting two free throws, knocks down the first. We talked about the Big 12 standings. You know, these teams come in with identical overall and identical conference records. Yeah. You know, I think you, you were talking about how Texas is shooting to start this game. I, the shots have been good, though. You know, this they're playing against the best defense in college basketball in Texas Tech. It's a lot to manage. I mean, there was a lot of emotion coming in. This is a hellacious environment. I think for Texas, it's, it's important not to turn it over early, which they've, they've done a nice job taking care of it to this point. Got Devin Askew now in the game for Texas. Desu had already checked in prior to that, and Allen a little juggle, but foul whistle on Davion Warren. It's just so paramount when you play against Texas Tech, and Texas as well. I mean, their defense is outstanding. Ball security is so important. Playing through resistance, knowing that there's going to be contact. Texas Tech, they have really good hands on defense. Timmy Allen turns, sees the help defender, Marcus Santos Silva, and throws it away. Yeah, and they're coming over. Anytime Timmy Allen has caught the ball tonight, he's got a guy and a half on him. And as he approaches that basket, they are coming over early, almost to double him as Allen approaches the basket. Well, how about this? Avery Benson has checked into the game. Avery, who hasn't played at all in any of the last four games, of course, he was here at Tech with Chris Beard and as he made his way onto the floor. This is... He got booed. This is gamesmanship. This is Chris Beard, a little yeah. nod to the gods, yeah. a little nod to the, to the fans in this building. What gamesmanship. I am here for this. Avery Benson last played in their game at Iowa State, played six minutes back on January 15th. But he's in the game five minutes in tonight here in Lubbock. Williams... Left it a little short, and a rebound wrestled by Dylan DeSue. Mike Cunningham's also in the game for Texas. Benson's going to shoot a three, and the lefty off the left side. Thus the reaction from the Tech crowd. Nice pass down low. Williams trying to adjust and scores! Wow, what an athletic move by Bryson Williams.
Jones saw a lane that was open for a moment, tried to kiss it in. Rebound yanked away by Adonis Arms. He's on the run. Runs into Askew, loses the handle, and here comes Vincent. Short shovel. Askew finds Jones all alone for the lane. And Texas Tech has gotten out, and they've gotten out in transition early in this game. But, the, you know, an early turnover there, and Avery Benson scoops it up, and they push it home. Osvaldo, a 31% three-point shooter, knocks one down. The elevation of Kevin O'Banner's game has given this team a major lift. He's averaging almost 16 points a game in their last four games, shooting 62% from the field. He leads them in made threes. He and Adonis Arms stepping up their games has given this Texas Tech team a major lift over their last five games. As you mentioned, O'Banner, four consecutive double-figure scoring games and six in the last seven. Eight-point lead for Tech. And we talked right at the top about the importance of Texas, how they would handle the first five or six minutes, how they handled it. McCuller driving baseline. And a push and a Texas foul. Yeah, I think one of the reasons Texas Tech has, has pushed is, again, Texas has a very good defense as well. And I think for either of these teams... You know, neither team has turned it over early. Texas has the three. One was early on a, a slipped jump shot by Trey Mitchell. But any chance you get out and transition in a game like this tonight, both teams play at a slow tempo. You expect this to be low scoring. You get out early, you don't have to play against that half court defense. McCuller missed the bunny. O'Banner a little too far underneath the rim to get the putback to go. Wilson shovels McCuller. This Texas Tech defense is so quick to react. You can't make this pass against Texas Tech. I mean, they're, they're just going to be too quick to the basketball. They're so good at anticipating. And turnovers have been an issue for Texas. You know, that's really how Tennessee got back in that game the other day. 22 points off of Texas turnovers is a real issue. Santos Silva giving a great effort. It does a hurdle over a family in the expensive seats. But it will be Texas ball. Apparently, I think the right foot stepped on the baseline as he started his, his jump. I'll tell you what, Chris. You and I have been at Allen Fieldhouse in Ames and Hilton Coliseum, West Virginia Coliseum in Morgan. Great venues in this conference. I don't think I've ever seen a fan base as amped up as this one to start again. Yeah, this, is, this is a special environment tonight. Askew. Arms. Forces the turnover. And a five count. You know, it's just suffocating, this defense. It's relentless. It's relentless ball pressure. It's denial of passing lanes. Every guy on the floor for Texas Tech is 6'5 or taller, and they all weigh over 200 pounds. I mean, this is a Darwin team. Bigger, faster, stronger. And their effort is outstanding. Bacho in the game. They're just daring him to take a three. Around. Oh, hit, hit every bit of the rim, but then Santos Silva with the tip in. That was only the second three-point attempt of the year for Bacho. The other came in the Oklahoma State game. It almost went in, but Santos Silva was there to finish it. Touch and a foul, Malik Wilson. Well, when the ball touches history.
And he returns to Lubbock for the first time tonight. <laughs> you know, part of the equation here, Chris, is the fact not only that Chris Beard left, but where he went. For Tech fans, Texas is their arch rival. Well, they have short memories after how much time Chris Beard spent here. And I get it. I mean, I don't blame him for being mad. That's a necessary three from Ramey from Texas' standpoint. They needed to kind of stem the tide because right now they have Marcus Carr on the bench with two fouls. Yeah, and it's affected their ball handling. I mean, that's the first time in the last couple minutes they've been able to get it into a scoring position. Santos Silva, and a pocket pass, Pacho had it taken away by Brock Cunningham. <laughs> he does that so much, Brock Cunningham. Always sticking his nose in. That's what he does so well off the bench for Texas, doesn't he? I mean, they're just dribbling. They're not entering the ball. They're not able to get it into a scoring position. Look at how far out they're running their offense. Askew trying to generate some kind of space but can't. Tough three from Andrew Jones is short. And Santos Silva went right over the top of Cunningham to get the rebound. McCuller. Santos Silva on the rebound is fouled. Well, I think Texas Tech fans are pretty happy with the successor to Chris Beard. Mark Adams is off to a tremendous start as the head coach in London. Yeah, he, he is. There's no doubt about it. You know, the defensive guru under Chris Beard has continued that, that legacy, that DNA. And, and the other impact, Mark, is the transfers. I mean, they struck gold with the transfers they got out of that portal, most of whom came from winning programs. Tech turns it over. Quick pass down low. And the finish for Christian Bishop. An early offense there for Texas. No, but they're going to have to defensive rebound. See the transfers for Texas Tech. And really, we can get into this at some point because of the transfer portal. These are a couple of old teams, Chris Patola. Yeah, really old. I mean, this is the future of college basketball. You've got 22, 23-year-olds playing rotation players, playing for both teams. I think for Mark Adams, you know, you go out, you get a Kevin O'Banner who played in a Sweet 16 last year, and Adonis Arms from Winthrop who played in the tournament last year. Bryson Williams, who was well coached in two stops at Fresno State and UTEP for Rodney Terry. You know who's been the best player on every team he's been on look at these ages folks this is the future of college basketball like i think guys as as they realize look i don't have to go pro i can go somewhere else and get better and i think both of these programs added guys who you know were, were pursuing that opportunity and as a result both of these rosters are extremely old there's askew who's the baby of the lot for texas but he's able to give it off to bishop who reverses and scores You, know, you get inside that paint, you find a way to get into that paint, mostly with dribble penetration. You, you can break down that Texas Tech defense. Nice job there by Askew and a good pass underneath. Well, Tech led by as many as 12, so Texas has cut that in half down to six. Dribble kick to the corner. Bounces off from Malik Wilson. Ramey on the run, kicks it to the corner. Three is up and no well short from Jay Stebris. Warren, a blocking foul on Texas, I believe, on Askew. You know, Ramey's got to take that shot on the other end. He's either going to take that thing to the rim and say, we are here. Texas is here tonight. We are going to take the action to you. Or just pull up at that little mid-range at that Big 12 logo. Instead, you're kicking it out to Jace Fredris, who's, you know, not playing a whole lot. You know, this is a game for your best players, your veteran guys. I mean, to get something in the open floor like that, you got to take advantage. That was the 18th foul, so it's a one-on-one -on -one here. Davion Warren, a 71% foul shooter, and he hits the first. 
Well, Thursday night after the NFL Pro Bowl skills showdown, the top teams in the Pac-12 scare, square off in men's hoops. Johnny Juzang should be back from COVID protocol for this one. He leads the number three Bruins against number seven, Arizona. Eight Eastern, five Pacific on ESPN and the app. Chris Beard coming back to Marcus Carr with the two fouls. But that Texas Tech has already attempted nine free throws. None so far for Texas. Carr looking. He'll use the dribble with six to shoot, and he'll put it up and score. Nice, and that's why. I mean, you need him. You need him for ball handling. You need his scoring in a game like this. You know, this comes down a lot because of how much Texas Tech switches to individual guys creating. That switching for Texas Tech takes you out of a lot of stuff you want to Off the hands of Arms, is able to recover. Santos Silva, a spin, a kick to the corner. O'Banner. Just throws it underneath. Right to Bishop. Ramey, nice little crossover move. Carr trying to break down Santos Silva. Right block. Bishop. Mitchell. Open three. Courtney Ramey. And how about the play by Trey Mitchell? Playing off two feet as the help side came over to take a charge. What a pass by Mitchell. Third three and four tries for Ramey to start the game. And Texas back in to make it a one possession game. O'Banner responds at the other end with a tech three. from Febris. Arms pulls up. In and out. Long pass. Febris lets the defender go by and lays it in. Transition. That's where Texas has gotten back into this game. They haven't had to really play against that half-court defense. They're gathering the defensive rebounding then getting ahead of Texas Tech in the open floor. O'Banner trying to hit another one. It does! Third three for O'Banner, who has 11 first-half points. And an offensive foul. O'Banner doing it on the other end as well. There, Rick Flair. As if we needed any more excitement in Lubbock tonight. Seven-point lead for the Red Raiders. You watched a little wrestling in your day, didn't you, Chris Patola? I watched absolutely. Big time fan. It was interesting. Uh, Chris Beard the other day to the, to the media saying uh, he, he was at a, not as much a Ric Flair fan. Uh, he was more of a Von Erichs Freebirds <laughs> fan growing up in Dallas, Texas. He used to watch Saturday Night Wrestling on a black and white TV. Said he stood in line at the Irving Mall at Sound Design Music Store to buy the Bad Street USA Michael Hayes soundtrack. He really downplayed the Ric Flair, uh, as he you did. expect. Williams, short. Right now there's a generation saying, wait a minute, <laughs> there were black and white televisions? Well, what's that about? Of course, Chris Beard had a black and white television. <laughs> Probably with the rabbit ears and some tinfoil <laughs> attached to it. Facing up to Sue. Somehow found Timmy Allen underneath, but he missed the money. It's a terrific pass. That has to be made. That's a soft take by Timmy Allen. McCuller dumps it down low. Williams! Pumps the lead back up to nine for Tech. They led by a dozen earlier in this first half. Ramey's been their hot three-point shooter so far tonight. Shoot, he's gonna have to put it up a three. Got it! 
And he just got a flop warning from Keith Kimball. But he did make the three-point shot. You know, again, they, that you're going to have to make individual plays, particularly late clock. And we know that this kid can fill it up. He hasn't been quite the scorer in a Texas uniform. He's, he was at Minnesota. And part of that is he's playing on a better team with better players. But that's the type of talent he is. And in a game like this, you need that type of a player to step up. Under five minutes to go first half in Lubbock. Santos Silva with a back down Allen. Goes to the corner of Bryson Williams. Three. Andrew Jones left his three short. Ball loose underneath. Santos Silva trying to feed it to a teammate, but Askew is still running with Allen. Sends it to the wing. And an offensive foul on Askew. Bryson Williams was there to I'll take the charge. What. Bryson Williams. You know, Bryson Williams is as good a story as there is in college basketball. And Mark, Chris, we will see you guys at the half. It's must see TV hating animosity. You need it in college basketball. Defend yourself, Chris we Patola. Need we need fan bases to hate one another. We need teams to have some animosity. That's what college sports, and particularly college basketball, is all about. So this Chris, is amazing. So Chris Ben and Cuff take that. Well, I think they get it. I just yeah. think they hate and animosity or strong words these days. You know, you got yeah, you're not afraid to use them, I guess. Santos Silva lost the hand, gets it back and scores. That left hand. They just dominate teams in the paint. They're one of the best teams at scoring in the paint, and they're one of the best teams at keeping teams out of their paint. It's a winning combination. Lead is 11 for Tech. Their largest lead of this half has been a dozen. Carr's been playing with two fouls for a while. Picked up two early ones, a little fade away. Off the front rim. It's a pull-up three. Quick shot from Warren. Ramey. from Carr is long. Warren tried to save it. Loose ball and McCuller dives for it. Enemy tech ball. And a foul on Texas. Trey Mitchell. I don't know about you. <laughs> oh, and this that's a heck of a save. And then how about the play by McCullough? Foxhole guy. Accountable, reliable, and tough. Oh, Bishop and that McCullough had a little tip there. Comes a test of manhood when you get in those those scrums, those jump ball potentials, not wanting to give it up. Six great rivalry men's basketball games for you Saturday on ESPN and the app. It starts at noon Eastern. Featuring these three. Number eight, Baylor against number 10, Kansas. At four central. Actually, four eastern, three central. Then, Carolina, Duke, and Kentucky, Alabama. What a full day of week. Texas Tech. Has a 12 point lead again, equaling their largest. Mm -hmm. 
Mitchell spins to the left hand. Nice. You know, they would love to be able to play through Trey Mitchell and Christian Bishop more in the post. Those guys offensively have been really inconsistent. Driving a bucket from Malik Wilson. Loose. McCuller. Three from McCuller. What a first half he's had, and this crowd absolutely loving it. Not only the offensive work, Chris, from McCuller, but he has drawn five fouls yeah. from Texas he's, players. He's as tough as it gets. He, he is, again, he's a Foxhole guy, a guy you want in any environment because you know he's going to be there. You know, and it's it's interesting as, as Texas, you know, prep close, some of the shots that they created if they weren't in transition, a lot of those shots in the half court were tough shots. They were not sustainable shots. Carr kicks. Febris. I think they're going to get Cunningham. We're going over the back there. And a push. And those are the shots that this Texas Tech defense is going to give up. Because they shrink the floor, because they, you know, they converge on the ball on penetration. And it's a, it's a good closeout. And he was open when he first caught it. And then Brock Cunningham, just not, not in position. And then Fallon from behind. I think the one thing we have found out in this first half is that Texas Tech has been the athletically superior team. I mean, they are physically bigger, they are stronger, and more athletic. In and out for Santos Silva. Let's see if Texas can... Cut into this deficit with just over a minute to play in the first half. Mitchell. Nacho with a hold. Obviously, Carr is two fouls early. When he left the game, Texas's offense seemed dysfunctional. At least he's brought... A little bit of stability back to their half-court offense. Well, and he was one of those guys who hit a couple tough shots, you know, during that run that they made that weren't necessarily sustainable. You'd love to see him try to play through the block a little bit. You know, they've at least been able to get some paint touches to get the ball up to the basket. Amy had some early threes and went down for him and finds one late in the half and late in the clock. I mean, it's a great make, but again, that's a tough shot that you're forced to put up late in the shot clock. You know, the ball pressure and the switching for Texas Tech has taken Texas. It's really put them on their heels, taking them out of their offense. Fourth, May three of the half in Texas history. If you don't have Big 12 now at ESPN Plus, it is a must-have. A few of the featured upcoming games, Iowa State, West Virginia next Tuesday, Baylor, Kansas State on Wednesday the 9th. Sign up today, ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. Tied up. Possession arrow favors Texas Tech. Nicely done. Trapping the inbounds pass out of the timeout by Chris Beard. Catch it on that sideline. That trap comes. You've got three defenders. Jack Black's at four. McCuller takes a drag to the wave and lays it in.
Texas looking for the final shot. Down to two. Ramey, can he hit another three? He's looking for a foul. Didn't get it. Three didn't fall. And we come to the end of the first half of 43-29 Texas Tech lead. There's your team numbers from the first half individually. Courtney Ramey led, led Texas with 12 on four threes. Timmy Allen, by the way, scoreless in that first half. Only two shots for Texas Tech. 11 for O'Banner. McCuller had 10 and Bryson Williams 9. Yeah, they, they took Timmy Allen out of the game so far. And to have no free throws in a game like this, it just shows you, you know, when Texas has gotten it close, they've been a little bit soft going to the rim. And no free throws in the first half for Texas. Tech shot 13. Locked down low, but Bishop able to hang with it and put it in. Well, Trey Mitchell and Kristen Bishop are going to have to step up. Like, they're going to have to make their presence felt up front here in this second half. Arms. Bryson Williams. He's nine... Consecutive double figure scoring games coming in tonight. It's off the right side from Warren. But guess who's there? Bryson Williams, who may be one of the most underrated players in this league. He's he's unbelievable. He's one of the most underrated players nationally. He's a terrific story. Open three from the corner. Not there that time for Randy. Long rebound, run down. Warren trying to feed O'Banner on the run, and they lose it off the leg of O'Banner and over to Texas. You know, becoming good starts with how you work. You watch Bryson Williams practice, there's no wasted motion. He's a serious person who takes his work seriously. Everything he does is game speed with a great attitude. I was, I was talking to Rodney Terry, who's actually on Chris Beard's staff, who coached him at Fresno State and at UTEP. He said he's been the best player every team he's been on. So I'm not surprised he's become Texas Tech's best player. First bucket for Allen. We're watching the shoot around today. And like you mentioned with Williams, he finishes the drill. He sprints back to the end of the line. Santo Silva from an odd angle able to get it up off the backboard. But is fouled. Well, Timmy Allen had started to, to really play well for Texas. He was a non-factor in the first half. It's a guy who's you know super talented, a five-position player, really good one-on-one. -on -one. That a, a good example of, of that type of player he is. And I give Timmy Allen a, a lot of credit, Mark, because this is a guy who's first team all Pac-12 last year. You know, and things were easy. You know, and, and he makes a decision to come to Texas knowing it was going to be hard, knowing Chris Beard was going to coach him hard. Like, he leaned, leaned into doing hard things. And he's been asked to do a lot of hard things this year, particularly defensively. But he embraced that. And, and I give that kid a lot of credit. Spent three seasons at Utah before transferring to Texas. Of all the transfers that came to Texas... He may be the one that had the biggest accolades, most accolades. Carr, a lot of dribbling, goes to the corner, picked up the dribble. Here is Allen. In the lane, floated from eight. That was partially blocked, but Bishop keeping it alive for the horns. Spinning, goes to the baseline, shoots, nothing there. Batted around by Cunningham that never hit the rim, and it's a shot clock violation. diminish the, the physical superiority of Texas Tech, but so much of how they play defense is between the ears. It's just wanting to do it. The rest for Santos Silva. Cunningham. Near steal there. Able to get a hand on it. But it'll stay with Tech. These teams, by the way, will play again 
on Saturday, February 19th. In Austin, a game that will be on ABC. O'Banner. Somebody's got to put it up. Three to shoot. McCullers going to be the one that does from three. Williams had the offensive rebound and loses it out of bounds, though, when he collided either with Carr or Ramey. Texas ball. By the way, Texas Tech shot 55% in the first half against the top five defense. The Texas defense is one of the best in college basketball. And that's why you saw the differential, why it's 13 right now, is, is not only did Texas Tech guard Texas in that first half, but their offense showed up. They had really balanced scoring. Carr. Did get a whistle. Marcus Carr picked up those two early fouls, Chris. He's done a nice job of not picking up a third. Well, the whistle came late, and this is a foul, and I think the official was waiting to see if that would go in. I mean, officials do that so often, and, and it's the wrong way to call that type of a play. It was a foul, clearly. So that's the first free throw attempt of the game for Texas. And it comes almost three minutes into the second half. Carr right near an 80% foul shooter on the season. He connects on both and pulls Texas within 11. Cunningham going for the steal on the inbounds to O'Banner, and that gets his teammates off the bench for Texas, applauding the effort of Brock Cunningham. Cunningham gets a fist bump from Chris Beard. You know, the one thing with Texas Tech, they don't have a pure point guard. I mean, that's why Mark Adams brings back, brings back Kevin McCullough, because he does most of the ball handling for them. But they don't have that break-you-down type of a point guard. So Allen defending the inbounds from arms in that corner. And well played by Tech. Arms drives. Too strong off the glass. Bishop yanks down the board. Here comes Carr. Carr bounce pass down low. Allen fakes the pass. Finds an open Ramey. Ooh. Big rebound, Bishop, and then a foul committed by Arms. You know, that's where Bishop and Mitchell need to be better. They need to be more active on the glass. They need to be more consistent rebounding the basketball. I mean, this is a big-time rebound. And he gets good position on the offensive glass. He gets inside position and just goes up to make a play with that, with that athleticism. You know, for Bishop, his best conference game was against Oklahoma January 11th. Ten points, eight rebounds, three steals in 26 minutes. I think that's more of the, the numbers they want to see game by game from Christian Bishop. Half his shots in conference play are threes. That can't happen I mean, for, for a guy like Christian Bishop. He's got to be much more active around the rim. Ten-point game. Texas has been playing from behind really most of the night. Their only lead. They had a very brief one-point lead a couple minutes into the game when it was up five to four. Now Doug Sermons. Well, that's got the crowd going. I don't think it exactly was argumentative, but anything with Chris Beard talking to an official tonight is going to draw this student section into a frenzy. 
Outstanding officiating crew here, by the way, tonight. As you got Doug Servants, Keith Kimball, and Kip Kissinger. Wilson. Open three. That's his shot. They stopped play. Cunningham was down on the baseline for a moment. But you're right. I mean, he lives off that shot. <laughs> That's money. They, they get that, you know, they run that ball handler off of his high screen. Two defenders go with, with the ball handler. And Bryson Williams has lived off this three. And so has Kevin O'Banner. Texas Tech's bigs, Williams and O'Banner, get that shot so much, and they're shooting such a high percentage. Try the lob for Bishop. A deflection, he's able to come up with it and score with the left hand. Trying to trap McCuller. I'm going to call a foul on Texas. I think they say Bishop got in the cylinder of McCuller. And a timeout. 49. Do it for three. That was at 17 points a game in conference play. And the versatility is what sticks out. It was funny. Rodney Terry was saying before the game that when uh, Williams first got to him at Fresno State, he didn't let Williams shoot from the perimeter. You know, they had other guys and it wasn't his strength. He has worked to become a three-point shooter. You think he's a guy who's going to go to the NBA draft? No question. I'd take that guy in a heartbeat. You know, second-round type of a guy who just, you know, becomes an unbelievable team guy. Carr stops. Allen feeds. Bishop a little too strong with his left hand. Five minutes gone here in the second half. 11-point lead for Texas Tech. They're led by as many as 15. McCuller. Going to get a reach. And Christian Bishop. McCuller gets this switch. And he just he just says, I could take Bishop. And does. I mean, he's he has driven the ball so well tonight. Say McCuller has been the instigator as far as attracting fouls. He's gone over a half dozen from, from Texas tonight. Wilson behind the back. Turned out not to be a very wise move. It's a turnover. Skip pass comes to Carr. Bishop trying to clear space. Actually, that's Mitchell, and he loses the ball. And it's scooped up by Wilson. Spin move to the baseline. And Wilson couldn't finish that. Carr pull up from 16. Swish. Nice screen in the open floor by Brock Cunningham to give Carr some space. Here comes the Red Raider crowd again. As Texas has gotten it back down to single digits. Maybe. Now away from the ball, Keith Kimball is calling a foul, I believe, on Davion Warren. XD, what a weekend lineup. AFC quarterbacks named Justin Herbert of the Chargers will be the starter over Texas Tech quarterback Patrick Mahomes in there as well, along with Lamar Jackson. It'll be a fun weekend. Williams. It's called a foul, I think, on the backside. Will 
to Sue. Banner. McCuller in the lane. Kicks to the corner. And an offensive foul as Carr's there to take the charge. You know, I don't think the numbers are great for Carr since he came back in with the two fouls, but he's done a lot of great things for Texas in this yeah, game. It was a really good play. He was there. He was set. Timed it as McCuller left his feet, and I agree with you, Mark. Like, I think Marcus Carr has been really solid for them tonight in the face of terrific pressure. You know, you'd love to see him probably get a little bit more aggressive even, because there, look, there's only so many possessions left in this game as we close in, you know, under 13 minutes. Well, after Texas fell down by 12 in the first half, they got it as close as three. It was 43-29 at the half. That's a blocking foul. Carr a little shaken up. So he gets back to his feet. A foul on Santos Silva. You know, these bigs, Santos Silva, O'Banner, because they switch one through five, these guys end up on ball handlers a lot. That's a good call. That is a block. But those guys have been very good staying in front of the ball. It's one of the reasons they've been able to switch as effectively as they have. Carr rejected the screen, kicks to the corner. Gets it back from Sioux. 13 minutes to play in Lubbock. Tough shot for Carr. Drained it. Nothing but net for Marcus Carr, who now has nine points. Horns get within seven. Wilson, baseline, pull up jumper from Florida. Amy may have gotten a hand on that. Didn't make it to the rim. Chance for Texas. Make this a two possession game. Car sealed off double Ramey three just a hair long arms muscles his way up to get a shot as it looked home for a fraction of a second like it was going to be tied up but we're under 12 minutes to play. Texas hanging around here. Speaking on Sunday in Austin to the media. It'll be really interesting to see, Chris, five, ten years down the road, if the perception of Chris Beard that many Texas Tech fans hold right now, if that will change. Because right now, a lot of Texas Tech fans, as we have seen and heard tonight, are not big fans of Chris Beard. Well, it, yeah, it's an open wound. I, yeah. It is ironic as we bask in this atmosphere tonight, which good on Texas Tech and good for the Big 12. Well, I think Chris Beard showed this university that having a great crowd is a force multiplier. Like, he worked at it. He, he dedicated a lot of energy to creating this atmosphere we are sitting in tonight. There are a lot of empty arenas out there in college basketball. And he's now trying to do that at Texas. Like, they had a good environment the other night against Tennessee. But, but he showed this university that. And yeah, they had a sellout at the Irwin Center on Saturday against Tennessee. In many ways, what Chris Beard helped create here tonight has been redirected back at him and his team. <laughs> Desu had it punched out. Tech has gotten it back to a 10-point game. They had gone about four and a half minutes without a bucket. The Red Raiders. O'Banner, pull-up jumper. Carr, nice feed down low. Desue, no space. Where's he going to go? Askew, dribbles, shoots, got it. 
Thought he got fouled from behind. Really strong drive by Askew. Open look, O'Banner bouncing around. And in. Is that what you call a shooter's roll? <laughs> that was something. Carr keeps the possession alive. Carr, nice pass. Ramey quick to Cunningham from the corner. Good! Mm. Great ball movement by the Horns. They get three on that possession. Really good, and that corner three's been there. That was a big answer. We pass the midway point of the second half. Five to shoot. Arms deep. Step back. That's a two off the heel. Carr. Ramey doubled. Back out, Askew passes up the three, gives it to Carr. Carr in the lane, penetrates, tried to kiss, not there. Really good defense. I mean, it was a closeout drill, and Texas Tech was on the spot each time. Nadolny loses the dribble, and then he fouls Carr. He may not have known he did have O'Banner back defensively, but I think he was thinking, I don't want to give away a breakaway lane at the other end. You know, give Texas credit. Texas Tech has not been able to put them away. You know, they've had some runs to stretch it to double figures, and Texas Tech just keeps coming back. With 9.03 to go, Texas has it down to eight. Texas has been shooting a little better here in the second half. Tech has seen their percentage go down in half number two. The much bigger Bacho on him gets in the lane, fires it up. I'll tell you what, Marcus Carr has been aggressive tonight, and he has been a big difference maker. They've needed his individual play, and by playing Askew and Carr together, you could put Askew on the ball. He can initiate the offense. You allow Carr to come off in the initial thrust, and he's he has taken on. I'm going to be a scorer. This is this is kind of the Marcus Carr that you saw at Minnesota, and I think he's been at times too unselfish as a Texas player. He's got a lot on his mind. You know, he's being asked to defend more this year than he ever has, and I think he wants to fit in. And he's a good dude at at heart. Like he wants to make this thing work at Texas, but in a game like this against this defense, you need his offense. Like you need that dude to be aggressive to score. He said Tech really hasn't been able to pull it away and put the game away, and I think a big reason has been Marcus Carr. No question. Carr is going to get a little breather here. And he has been a big difference maker. You see the reaction from Chris Beard as Carr got to the bench. Hey, we've got a two-possession game with a little over eight and a half minutes to go. O'Banner stripped by Ramey. Oh, yeah, it was a foul. It was. Yeah, it was a foul. And, they're, you know, they're showing a little zone. I like it. You know, force Texas Tech to beat you all over the top down the stretch of this game. Like, don't... You know, Texas Tech has made threes in this game, but it's, you know, over the season, they have not been a good perimeter shooting team. Now back in the man. As soon as Williams saw the double, passes out deep three... Has got a, his last two threes. 
to go his way magically. Nice play by Mitchell to throw it off Williams to keep the possession for Texas. I'll tell you what, O'Banner, he must have a four-leaf clover in his pocket well, tonight, I'm, huh? I'm saying make him. Chris, you experienced a few of those on your time on Coach K's staff. Yeah, some, some big time, big time moments in that rivalry. And the one thing I know is records do not matter. It doesn't matter which team is good, bad, great, both teams bad. It does not matter. It's going to be a good one. It was Warren It was able to block that. They had a short clock, Texas, but nice defense as usual from Tech. They get a blocking foul. And there's number three on Carr. He played a significant portion of this game with two fouls. You know, you mentioned this earlier, Mark, like one of those, here's his block. What a big-time play on, the, on that end. But you mentioned Kevin McCullough and the fouls he's drawn tonight. Like, that's a big stat that isn't talked about a whole lot, you know, putting the other team in that type of foul trouble. And that's another example. I mean, he just drives it hard and ends up picking up a foul. So number three on Carr. We're under eight minutes to go. Tech has expanded it back to a double-digit lead. Converts from the line. What does Texas have left in these last eight minutes? The ball went out of bounds uh, off tech, but it was the hands of Davion Warren that caused all the, the problems in the corner for Texas. They're fortunate to keep possession. Shot clock at 14. Carr takes it out. Askew, aggressive. He's fouled. He's played well, too. You know, they've needed that driving ability of, of Carr and Askew tonight. Askew, a guy who is starting to play better. You know, only given about 15 minutes a game. But I, I think you're going to start to see those numbers go up. Because I think he's starting to feel more comfortable. Talked about the age of the rosters for each team. For Texas, Askew is the, the baby. He's the real young guy, especially compared to his teammates. Kentucky transfer. Trying to come back in the game, though. You can't miss free throws. You sure they can't front rim them like that. Able to get that one over the rim and hit one of two. Sermons will call the foul on Allen. Both teams in the bonus. So we'll go to the other end for a one and one and It's been a well-officiated game tonight. Tremendous both, crew. It's been a physical game, as you would expect, between these two teams. They, they've, they've kept this thing... On the up and up. And, and kudos to the conference. Bringing in these three officials like Keith Kimball and Doug Sermons and Kip Kissinger, three of the best. As there's Kip right there talking to Williams. Again, great piece of officiating. Sermons getting involved as well. The conference knew, hey, tempers could flare in this game. I mean, and they've come close. I mean, they have uh, to a degree. And, and these officials have been right on top of them. Warren sinks them both. Carr on the drive. Tough shot. Can't get it to fall. Until Marcus Carr has given it everything he's gotten tonight, though. Yeah, it's the length of McCullough there. It's just too much. Spin. Shooting. Can't get it over the rim. 
for arms. Allen brings it ahead. Probes. Going to get O'Banner. And the tech foul with 6.55 to play. Yeah, it's a block. <laughs> it's no doubt. <laughs> Can't lower your shoulder while you're on the move. No, no, that's a block. That's yeah. that's actually an egregious block. Now yeah. on a 72% free throw shooter. Can't hit the front end. Williams just off the mark, offensive rebound from O'Banner, then out of bounds off of Arms. Texas is scoring, God, they haven't scored from the field in over three minutes now. This crowd has been exceptional all night long. One it's, of the best you'll ever find. It's an easy team to root for, too. Yeah. And these guys leave it all out there, this Texas Tech team. Thirteen and zero at home. When you go back to last year, sixteen and zero, they won their last three home games last season with Beard as their head coach. Askew. Oh, she's got it. I think Christian Bishop thought the same thing. You got to yeah. put that up. Look, look, Bishop was open, but he wasn't expecting it, and and that's where Askew. You know, though he and Carr have been shooting that shot all night. Yeah, you know, the, to give Bishop credit, he's going to the offensive glass. Askew's got to shoot this shot, and I think that's exactly what Chris Beard is saying to him right there. You did the hard part. You now shoot your <laughs> shot. Yeah. You, you did all the pretty stuff. Now shoot the ball. Coming up on the six-minute mark, 12-point lead for Tech. O'Banner, a three. What's this one going to do? That's long. Carr from the left elbow. That's off board. You know, you had... The miss front end of a one-on-one. -one. You had the non-shot there by Askew. You know, some missed opportunity. Their defense, they're getting stops, which when you want to come back in a game, it starts there. They just had some misses here on the offensive end. You know, the missed free throws almost cost them a game against Tennessee. Ooh, Ooh man. Bishop on the inbounds. Say, he got some hops on that one. Got fouled, going for the lob slam. Really good execution. Mm. Bishop swishes the first. I mentioned the free throws in the Tennessee game. Texas five of twelve. From the line. In fact, remember Timmy Allen missed the first free throw with six seconds left in the game. He hit the second and put him up one, and that proved to be the game winner. Bishop nails both there. Williams and Bishop. Warren elects to shoot a three that's well off the left side. Santos Silva back to Warren and one. <laughs> Do 
You give Texas Tech two cracks at it. Again, the offensive glass, a factor in this game, and a really nice cut and finish through the contact there by Davion Warren. Can't finish the three-point play. Ramey sealed off by Williams. Carr. Jumper. Got it. Mitchell. Timeout. Just under five minutes to go. 64-50 has been outstanding. They have cheered their lungs out. It has been one of the best environments in college basketball tonight. Texas and get this back down to single digits. Instead, Davion Warren says, No, you won't. The Tech defense stands tall. Carr and Jones tried to trap him. He's able to get rid of it underneath Warren. McCuller comes crashing in at his foul. And the officials pull McCuller away before anything can escalate. Play spirit here at Texas Tech. He stayed, and I think Tech fans are really happy that he did. He's he's a terrific coach. I mean, look at look at the end of the day, all the jargon we use, all of the promotion and everything. You want to know how good a coach is? Just look at his team and how hard they play and how disciplined they are. Watch him in practice. I mean, like that's where coaches set themselves apart and you watch this Texas Tech team they play hard they are so sharp and disciplined in what they do they care and it's a lot because of that guy I asked Mark Adams at media day in Kansas City what his first thought was when he got the job as the head man at Texas Tech and he said two words about time and he wasn't being egotistical in any way and he was exactly right it is his time. And he's, he's stepped into an amazing situation, a lot of which he was a part of building. Right. But this is ready-made. Mark Adams, who's from Brownfield, Texas, which is about 40 miles southwest of Lubbock. It's not far from here. But he is really a hometown guy. Allen hits the front end. He added winners in that transfer portal to his team. I mean, that's the thing I think Texas, te Texas rather, uh, with Chris Beard and his transfers, those guys are good players. A lot of them coming from losing programs. So, like, you're teaching. There's Winning is a habit. And, and if you don't have it as a habit, you've got to learn it. Terrence Shannon's in the game. He's been dealing with a back issue again and did not play in the Red Raiders' last game against Mississippi State on Saturday. Jump stop, Allen, 14-footer, won't go. And with under three minutes to go, Tech with the ball and a 13-point lead. <laughs> Shannon 
That's an offensive foul. He ran over Allen. A little bit of a bull in a china shop guy who hasn't played, as you said. He's he's chopping at the bit. He sees his crowd saying, man, I got to get me a taste of this. I don't care who I got to bowl over in order to do it. <laughs> That's a charge. <laughs> it's a charge. I mean, it's, it was actually closer than I thought, but but he, I mean, when you start lowering that shoulder and uh, driving like a running back, Jones three, around and out, tipped around. Carr gets it back. Carr probes gets in there and lays it in. Man, he's been really good tonight. He's kept him in the game. And it's turn seven central number five Kentucky takes on Alabama Kentucky really shot up in the AP poll after thumping Kansas yeah, that, that team is for real You've got one guy basically out rebounding everybody and then a backcourt with really two handlers and they're good there he goes again Carr couldn't get the shot to drop but he's gonna shoot two Texas turning, trying to turn things around a little like Tennessee did to them the other day. You know, where Tennessee all started pressing. Texas couldn't handle the basketball. Guard's been perfect from the line tonight. Now five of five. Texas didn't shoot their first free throw until early in the second half. And now it's into 13. Texas Tech. 16 to 24 from the line tonight. And exceptional, especially second half for Carr. And this is the second. I think I've said this a lot in this second half. It's a 10 point lead, but now McCuller throws it away looking for arms. Well, and Mark Adams has five guys out here who he would be comfortable handling the basketball. He took O'Banner and Santos Silva off the floor to be able to go against this pressure and just careless. Jones fires a pass Cunningham quick shot and then he commits the foul That's not the shot you want. I mean, Marcus Carr has got to be involved in that play. And, you know, just because you're open doesn't make it a good shot. Two minutes left in this game, that is a critical possession. You close it to eight, and then you can apply that pressure again. Now we're talking. But instead, you take a bad shot from a guy who shouldn't be taking it, and then he commits a, a silly foul. That was the fifth foul on Cunningham, who fouls out of a game. For the fourth time this year. In fact, he's the only Texas player to foul out of a game this year. <laughs> he's done it four times now. Well, of all the Texas players, he would probably he's be, gonna the be the guy. He's going to be the guy. He's the one. A little badge of honor for him. Double bonus, two shots. around and it's Feveris who eventually lets the rebound three Andrew Jones bit of a late whistle but it's a foul called on arms and it'll be three free throws. You know, and again, this is a silly play. Like, you don't need to commit this foul. 
you know, even if he hits that, you know, it's not it's not killer. But now the clock stops. You send him to the foul line for three free throws, and then you know, assuming he makes the third, now they got a chance to set that pressure up again. And Jones, who has been the best free throw shooter this year for Texas, misses the first. He's up over 85% from the line this year. And you start adding up the missed free throws in this half, particularly in the last 10 minutes, it's been a killer for Texas. You see Avery Benson back in the game for Texas after he made an early appearance in this contest about five minutes in in the first half. Got that third one to go, so he hits two of three. Ten-point game again, 140 left. Make that a nine-point game. Blackie foul on the horns. Well, Texas Tech not doing themselves any favors, catching it in that deep corner. You've got to seal that sideline, though. You know, you give a little bit of a window there. And McCullough, as we pointed out tonight, how many fouls has he drawn? I mean, that has been his best skill tonight. That's... Their offense has been so good is balance scoring I and mean, they've gotten it from a number of different guys And as we said, I mean they've put up you know right now 73 against a very good defense. I mean Texas is a top five defense or has been up to this point in the season And Texas came in On the season allowing opponents only about 55 points per game Three Jones Scooped up off the floor by arms, and here comes McCuller. He's got Shannon ahead of the field, but the play stops. As behind the play, Doug Sermons whistles a foul. I think that prevented a little showtime from Terrence Shannon. You know, that type of a foul has been committed in European basketball and in international basketball forever. It is starting to find its way into college basketball. More coaches are coaching to it, and more players are starting to understand the value of committing that type of a foul as a team gets out on a fast break. This big crowd smelling a win. And a block from Warren, but he does pick up the foul. The look on his face like, really? I thought he caught him low. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's a foul. Yep. Texas Tech looking for their fifth win this year against a top 25 team. They're able to close it out. It would tie them with Bama and Marquette for the most in D1. Mark Adams' team will be in Morgantown on Saturday. That's next for them. Texas. They will take on Iowa State on Saturday in Austin. This team is for real. I mean, this is a top 10 team. There's no question about it. They, you start checking off blocks of what makes. Of what makes a team good. They've got it all. Defense, depth, veteran leadership. Texas Tech is going to stay unbeaten at home. Oh, Shannon. Oh, the follow.
Chris Patola, this was some night in Lubbock. I'm glad we got to be a part of it. It was as good an environment. It was the best environment we've had in college basketball this year, by far. Good on Texas Tech, man. They came out tonight, put on a show. Chris Beard comes back to Lubbock. And his Longhorns will leave with a 13-point loss, 77-64.